Hey guys, um, welcome to the seventh video of ICT application. And of course, I remain your host, Mr. Ajayo. And, and we'll be looking at another wonderful subtopic, which is um, application of ICT in the medical um, field, the hospital field. Yes, looking at medicine. In medicine. So, how vital is computer in medicine? And uh, you need to understand that computer demands effort. We've looked at banking, we've seen uh, the transformation of ICT in banking, and we're not bringing that transformation now in medicine. Now, we can, uh, you need to note that computers are used in many areas of medicine, not just um, the ones we're going to talk about, but more than even um, um, what we're going to even talk about. Because there is so many uses of computer in the medical field that they have used and they are still going to use, right? <laughs> they are still going to use. And uh, the first one um, of the so many uses of um, computers in medicine is patient records. Patient records. We'll talk about patient records, we'll talk about database that can hold patient details and those details can be accessed from any computers within the hospital intranet. We talked about intranet, we talked about internet, we talked about extranet. So, um, I want to actually go back to your notes to actually check on that. So, doctors, here doctors and hospitals need to keep, rec uh, keep accurate records of all their patients, okay? This is to ensure current diagnosis and treatment and up-to-date medical history is part of the diagnostic process. With the help of database, they can be able to know um, the issues this person is having from prior hospitals. You know, and that's one of the good things about um, the computerized system of the, in the medical firm. You can be able to check the medical history of this patient all through the hospitals he or she have gone to, okay? Database are kept by doctors and hospitals so that data can be shared, you see that, uh, between medical uh, practitioners and pharmacies. For example, to ensure no drugs are prescribed um, which interact with each other in an unsafe manner. Database also allow a quick and easy search for patient records, okay? And this could be very important in emergency. That is one of the good things about uh, the computer in medicine. In terms of humanity, you want to make quick search, what could be the reason you can have that in a possible time? Okay, when assessing the patient's medical history uh, could mean the difference between what life and death. It could also mean that medication can be prescribed without losing issuing paper uh, prescription. An email could be sent to the pharmacy instead. Okay. Now, sort of data which will be required on a patient database. What are the um, information of the on the patient database? First of all, a unique number is assigned to that patient. Every hospital have a unique number, okay? We have the name and address of the patient, date of birth of the patient, gender of the patient, medical history of that patient, the blood group of the, of the patient, um, non allergies of the patient, doctors that have been handling that patient, any current treatment he or, he, he or she is currently having, um, any current diagnosis he or she is having, and um, additional information like CT scan, if they've had CT scan, X-rays, and the likes of that. That brings us to uh, the patient's identification, talking about barcodes or wristbands of the patient that can be used to assess the patient records, okay? They can be barcodes or the wristband. So you just start, uh, people, advanced hospital do it, right? There's a, a barcode on the wrist band, okay? Um, pharmacy records, okay? It can generate labels for drugs. Um, check if the patient is allergic to what a particular word, drug. Now, we have what we call uh, um, the use of the 3D printer. Now, before then, uh, before we um, quickly go into the um, 3D printer, let's let's look at something. Let's look at the, the um, nope. Let's look at that right here. 
That's six. Okay, so let's look at it here. Now you see that uh, not just keeping patients records, but also monitoring what the vital signs. Okay, vital signs. For example, the hospital, the patient can be, um, for example, in the hospital, and we can use it to. With the help of the computer, we can use it to measure the vital signs of the person. If the person is alive, if the person is dead, this the system gives an indication that um, that patient is actually currently what recovery. And what could be the problem um, in that measuring the monitoring the heartbeat and the likes of them? And this is done with what a controlled what system. Of course, the use of expert systems, which is what, which is what we're going to talk in our next video to actually diagnose what. ENSAs can be done. Now, let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of information system, use of computers in medicine. We can see that computer can take more accurate, um, more frequent readings of patients. Okay? They can take in readings. The, 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 the read, the, it's not like back then you use human, uh, you, you use your hand to touch and the human to know if the person has fever or whatever. It's crazy, right? <laughs> right? So, disadvantage is our equipment could be more expensive. Purchasing this equipment is no joke. It's quite expensive, right? Computers can respond quicker to any changes in patients' world condition. That's another thing. So, the moment the patient is reacting, the computer is sending signal. That's you. Know, this patient, you, you make beep, 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 beep. You know, it's actually reacting to the, you know, to stimuli of that patient, okay? Uh, trainings are also required uh, for the uh, nurses, doctors to be able to use this equipment effectively. Okay, staff are available to complete other tasks, right? They can just be there and uh, why they are doing other things. They can be monitoring the patient while also doing other things, okay? Data can be stored in a central place. There can be a central um, database. Talking about power database or distributed power database where all the information are saved. Saving physical space, which could be required to store um, paper records. Though we are still looking at a computer, there is still a need to actually put in word, the manual. Okay, a system could stop responding, uh, which is also not very, very, very good. Okay, so let's get back to 3D printing. Now, the use of 3D printers, talking about the third-dimensional printers, right? Uh, we, we first introduced it in um, the previous chapters, right? And they are used in a number of fields and it's rapidly progressing. <coughs> now, um, 3D printers are is not just in medicine, they are used in engineering to produce a lot of things, okay? Now, one of the most innovative uses is in the field of medicine okay the following is just a small insight to development that's taken across the world now we have the surgical and diagnostic aids which is very very important right we can print out those um ana uh, uh, anatomical parts right using the 3d printers right and they're used as a towards diagnosis and surgical word procedures okay um uh, especially when those equipments are not available. The 3D printer can actually get something that they can use for the surgery. Then we have the uh, computed tomography, which involves producing the image of the internal part of the body in a series of thin lines. Okay, uh, we use that to produce. You put a person on the machine, it will scan the whole body, and you can be able to see if there's any bone disjointed or whatever. That's messy for you. Uh, we have the magnetic resonant imaging. Now, this is a strong magnetic fields and we do with to produce series of images of the internal organs of the body. Okay, now a 3D printer can then produce this 3D representation of a patient's internal organ, blood vessel, major arteries, tumors, and so on. So they, that's the function of the 3D printer. After getting an image, of the patient, they produce these organs of this um, uh, patient and they try to see how they can do the surgery on that model. Okay, the doctors or surgeon can use it to show the patient exactly what is wrong and then show them what procedures are required so they can see their own body when 3D printing and tell them what is. Now, this allows for patient engagement 
which will be missing from the more traditional right consultational word method they can be able to see what is wrong in their body just by looking at the model the prototype that has been what created it can also help um, the surgeon when planning surgical procedures because they can see exactly what is required well in advance of what the operation now in this way 3d printing can be used for diagnostics and pre-surgical work is okay and that is that the next one is prosthetic and the prosthetic um while well, it's being used to print out these false arms uh hands and legs in case so, somebody's hand is amputated or legs amputated uh, i'm not very good in medicine and uh, not my very best field because i i get scared of blood i get scared of blood i get scared of it. a lot of things medicine is not terrified of of taking drugs so it's really itchy for me it's, you know it's really going deep in explaining all the things okay so please bear with me right and of course the state of art um, of course it costs a lot of money to actually put up uh, those um, arms first arms legs and legs like that okay and of course they're still working on it to ensure that there's a more better way to go about it we have tissue engineering okay and this allows you to print it off of printing biocompatible materials okay cells and supporting structures right now talking about producing artificial cells and tissues right um within the 3d printed uh, object now using biolinks talking about complex process that require input from biologists medical engineering physicists and other engineering to be able to get this work done okay of course um it has already been used successfully so it's not it's not just on the trial phase, right? To produce a multi-layer skin tissues, bone tissues, heart, um, and the likes of that. You do it to produce heart and all the rest, and that will replace your heart. I'm so not so comfortable being talking about all this, but uh, yeah, it's pain. I'm feeling as if it's my heart that we paid off. My heart. <laughs> Don't be bothered. My heart. Right? So there's still much research to do, and the medicine is still a work in progress. They have seen the beauty of I, um, ICT of computers coming in and they're doing a lot of good with it. We have the artificial blood vessel, okay, the 3D printing of artificial blood vessel using human cells, you know, work in the same way as that, okay. Customized medicine, 3D printing can actually do that, right, to suit the individual. This is known as, we call it patient centric medicine, okay, and they are referred to as what? Printlets. Uh, printed tablets. Um, in fact, what they do is, as newly developed medicines are now very potent, you can have different effects on different people. So there is now a need to review the manufacturing method used to produce them. The 3D printing offers the possibility of creating personalized medicine, which allows automatic control release of the medicine into the patient. It even allows multiple med uh, medicine within a single printlet. To make fix those what combination that allows for the optimal release of each medicine in the body now there's so much about it uh talking about tailored medicine to suit the individual better control of the medicine release into the body it saves money talking about meaning modern uh, medicine are quite expensive better targeting of the medicine so its effects can be what optimized and the likes of that so thank you so much um uh, talking about um the patient monitoring i just want to hit on it um is we use sensors right talking about your input that measure the changes in temperature heart rate breathing rate um brain activities blood pressure blood sugar level oxygen levels your oxygen levels in the patient body okay the um analog signals from the sensors and then converted into digital signals talking about the adc right using an analog to digital word converter graphs are produced to show trends over time the readings are constantly compared with the preset values if the values aren't in the prescribed range the medical staff are also notified hospital management system yes all the above mentioned are other the what hospital management was system we showed all of them and they can be assessed i uh, used to assess the details from all departments the expert system i talked about talk about an interactive screen 
right? An interactive script that compares uh, the axes of questions for a doctor to answer using keyboards or a touch of screen, right? And is an inference engine that compares the symptoms with knowledge base using the rule base to find matches. And um, finally, we have the system suggests the possible illness uh, with, with probability of each cure and recommendation. And there's also an explanation system that will explain how this particular diagnosis was suggested. So important right now. So important. Even design of medical tools and equipment. We talked about it. Design of medical tools and equipment with the help of what? The three uh, D printer. Which tools can be made faster and with reduced cost. Okay. They can also be made. Uh, they are. They can. There are changes that can be made to those tools. And of course, it's not the same with the traditional method. Thank you so much for sticking out this video. See you in our next video. Okay.